Yes, sir, for the next hour is Jack Elson, Chief Political Correspondent for The Sun. Uh, welcome, Jack. Uh, an auspicious day, of course. Uh, <laughs> Omid Scobie seems to be dominating the news. I know that royal royalty is your speciality. Of course. No, it, no it's not. <laughs> no, but we're all kind of experts on the British royal family. Everybody wants to stick their the past five years. Yeah. The story seems to be today, in this fast-moving uh, story, uh, sort of unleashed, really, by Piers Morgan on Talk TV, a couple of nights ago when he named Charles and Kate as the royals named in Omid Scobie's Dutch version of the book. Uh, Omid Scobie is refusing to apologise for this, insisting he didn't know anything about this paragraph uh, that contains the names. Uh, meanwhile, the Dutch translator, a lady, a rather shocked lady, has come out and said, listen, I got the manuscript and I translated it. That's what I do. That paragraph was in the book. Omid Scobie saying, nothing to do with me, Gov. So, uh, a murky situation uh, and uh, not much light being cast upon it. Totally, totally baffling, isn't it? Yeah. And um, I think Omid Scobie obviously came out and says that he just got nothing to do with it and he didn't put Charles and Kate's name in this book. All he did was write the book. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. doesn't really pass the sniff test, does it? Because yeah. you can't really mistranslate names. They're names exactly whether you have what them I've been saying. Dutch, English, German, Chinese, you know, they are names and they can't be mistranslated. And you know, this Dutch publisher has spoken to the mail today and said, I didn't just pluck these names out of thin air. You know, I got them right. in this manuscript, which has then gone on to the bookshelves of, uh, of the Netherlands. And so I think Piers Morgan completely legitimately Absolutely. named them on talk yeah. TV after, you know, everyone in Holland managed to know who they were. You know, journalists obviously knew who they were for a few days. Mm -hmm. um, and so now the rest of the nation does. And I think that this just goes to show um, how horrid and fraught this whole royal affair is. I mean, it's not great for Charles and Kate in any way. And obviously, as Piers Morgan said, he's, he doesn't think they're racist. I don't think they're racist either. But, you know, it's, um, it's definitely a saga which is blowing up. And Grabbing the headlines, isn't it? Yeah, so, yeah. They, <laughs> this is sort of dominating. They say, them. you know, it's not on the surface of it great for Charles and Kate, but I don't think it's causing them any issues whatsoever. Charles no. is getting on with his thing. He was over there giving the opening address at, you know, the gathering of the Green Greenites, um, as is his wont, you know, as, as is very much in his style. William and Kate last night turning up at the Royal Variety performance, looking glitzy, having a standing ovation. I don't think I've read in any single newspaper or any single report or even frankly speaking any single tweet anyone saying this is terrible the you know the king is a racist Completely. the princess of wales is a racist if anything it's sort of gone the other direction where people have gone come on pull the other one yeah exactly and the only thing it really is doing is sort of sucking attention from things which i believe that the royals would rather focus on so mm. charles is out at cop today and i'm sure we'll talk about that later you know he's very um, climate minded be. very climate minded i'm sure that he would rather people focus yeah. on that rather than these spurious allegations in the book. Um, yeah. But you're right, no-one's seriously saying uh, the royal family's racist in this Yeah, scenario. the king is in uh, Dubai delivering his strange version of not being political. Uh, <laughs> yeah, unbelievable. Uh, this apolitical king, he's a green fanatic. But, uh, uh, do you know what? You, uh, by the way, Your Majesty, I don't agree with you. As much as I'm sort of not really up for his tree-hugging ways, I still think it's quite a decent sign of the relevance of the monarchy and the stature of Britain on the international stage that he is the person being invited to give the opening address. Think what you like about climate change and COP28. I think that in itself is quite important.